man. It's so great that I'm finally done with that Day of the Doctor review. After all the work I put into that, I don't think I can stand to talk about anything Doctor Who related for a long time. So let's just watch the latest episode of My Little Pony and escape from all that Doctor Who stuff. Oh, come on! <laughs> Thanks, M.A. Larson. Now that might seem like a strange way to start a video for an episode in a season that M.A. Larson is totally absent from, but that's exactly the thing. When I heard that Larson would not be writing in season 4, I was pretty bummed out, like most people, because I think he's a great writer. But at the same time, I knew that this would be a great season for Fluttershy, because as great a writer as M.A. Larson is, he can't write well for Fluttershy at all. And it seems like I was right. With Philly Vanilli and this episode, Fluttershy is really able to grow and prosper as a character in this season. So let's talk about this episode. I love the opening in this episode. It's a cute and clever reversal of the opening to Sonic Rainboom all the way back in season one. So it's nice humor and a clever callback, but it also doesn't detract from the story and still provides exposition for what will be happening in the episode. And speaking of what's happening in the episode, remember those breezies that Flourish I mentioned back in Three's a Crowd? Well, now they're back and they're going to be flying through Ponyville. And as they float through Ponyville, the Pegasi will be generating the breeze to help them. I really like how the ponies help the breezies here. It implies that they live in a sort of symbiosis, almost. I like that, because Equestria is a world built around the idea of harmony and friendship, and it would make sense that the ecosystem would have these sorts of relationships between even vastly different species. Anyways, so everyone is watching as the breezies drift softly over Ponyville, but then Spike screws it up, and a small pack of breezies gets separated from the rest of the group. And what? A commercial break already? But hardly anything even happened yet. Once again, we're faced with a very slow-paced episode, and as I said in my video on Simple Ways, I like this slow pace. It seems that Season 4 is finally starting to slow down and take a breather from all the extreme wackiness that dominated the first half of the season. Some people may call this episode boring, but I find it relaxing. Fluttershy manages to save the separated Breezies, but they're still well behind the others. So they decide to give all the breezies a bit of a rest and then start up the breeze again so they can get home. And it's here we get introduced to the leader of the bunch, Seabreeze, who is less than keen about waiting to return home. Seabreeze is great because he turns the whole cliched cartoon fairy trope on its head. So while Twilight takes the whole pretty purple pony princess trope and essentially sticks a giant middle finger in its face, Seabreeze does the same but points the finger at the fabulous feminine fantasy fairy motif. I mean, just look at him. For starters, him. And then there's his accent. Actually, their whole language has a kind of harsh sound to it. Not exactly what you would expect from sweet little magical cartoon fairies. Plus, Seabreeze is just kind of a jerk. And that being said, while Seabreeze acts like a jerk, you can't really antagonize him. After all, he's just looking out for the group and understands the danger of waiting too long and missing their chance to get home. And Seabreeze even has a family back home. So his frustrations towards waiting are completely understandable. However, the gravity of returning home seems to be lost on the rest of the Breezies, who are more than happy to just take advantage of Fluttershy's hospitality and keep waiting. Eventually, Seabreeze decides he's had enough and sets out alone. However, one thing the first act of the episode made very clear was that the Breezies are very fragile and in no way can survive on their own out in the world. Also, am I the only one who thinks it's kind of funny that when Fluttershy is looking for Seabreeze, she calls out his name and then immediately checks the bottom of her hoof? Anyways, Seabreeze finds himself cornered by an angry swarm of bees, but here comes Fluttershy to the rescue. Fluttershy, at first, tries to kindly ask the bees to leave the Seabreeze alone, but after the bees don't listen, Fluttershy goes into assertive mode and tells the bees to buzz off. Get it? Buzz off, because bees and... Oh, look, a key. The lesson being taught here is great. Seabreeze and Fluttershy showcase opposite extremes in their attitudes. Fluttershy is too kind, which leads to the Breezies just taking advantage of her, while Seabreeze is too mean, which leads to none of the Breezies wanting to listen to her. And together, they both learn that you have to walk the middle ground between assertiveness and kindness. I've heard a lot of people say that this is a much better way of handling the moral and putting your hoof down, and as much as I love putting your hoof down, I do have to agree, this episode pulls off the moral much better. So Seabreeze and Fluttershy return to the cottage, and this time Fluttershy puts her hoof down and tells the 
breezes that they have to leave now if they ever want to make it home. But now we have an issue. The breeze is now too strong for so few breezes, and they won't be able to hold the group together. Rainbow Dash and the other Pegasi try slowing the breeze down, but to no avail. So the only remaining solution would be to get more breezies, and Twilight has just that solution. She uses a spell she learned to turn the rest of the main six into breezies. I've heard a lot of people call contrivance at this. I mean, why would Twilight just so happen to have a spell to turn ponies into breezies? And I would agree with these complaints if it actually was just a spell to turn ponies into breezies, but it isn't. I think we can safely assume from the fact that Twilight spell also encompasses the group of breezies that it's really a just a general trans transformation spell, and Twilight needed the breezies to know what to turn the ponies into. Kinda like how the Zygons in Doctor Who have to keep people alive so- Ah, damn. I said I wouldn't talk about Doctor Who. Ugh. Anyways, I think Twilight studying up on and remembering a general transformation spell is pretty understandable, because that can be used in all sorts of situations. And besides, even if it was contrived, I wouldn't even care. I mean, just look at how adorable the main six as breezies are. Duh. And now our breezies return home as Seabreeze is united with his family, and the main six return to their pony forms. Man, I love this episode. After she wrote the pinnacle of mediocrity that was Pinky Apple Pie, I wasn't really interested in Natasha Levenger's writing. But after this episode, with its world building, great humor, and really great lesson, I'm going to start looking forward to more of her episodes. Thanks for watching.